Hetepu, peace and blessings from Mut Imani of Hetep Meditation and Yoga. Today's affirmation is from Luther Standing Bear. The man who sat on the ground in his teepee, meditating on life and its meaning, accepting the kinship of all creatures and acknowledging unity with the universe of things was infusing into his being the true essence of civilization. Today, I will be reading from a, um, a, a book that intuition led me to. It's called Poser, My Life in 23 Yoga Poses by Claire Didera. Hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. Today I will be reading the introduction. Prologue, Camel. Taking up yoga in the middle of my life is like having someone hand you a dossier about yourself. A dossier full of information you're not really sure you want. I hadn't been doing yoga long when the information began to come in. One cloudy January afternoon, 20 of us were lowering ourselves backward into camel pose as slowly and tentatively as swimmers entering cold water. We kneeled on our mats, our feet sticking straight out behind us. The idea was this. You reached back with both hands and grabbed your heels. You thrust your hips forward. Meanwhile, your chest rose up into the air. It seemed like a, <clears throat> a little porny, but I was willing to give it an honest try. I did it once. My hands reached, my hips thrust, my chest, I hoped, rose. My lower back crimped. I came out of the pose, which was at least as scary as going into the pose. I sat for a moment and watched the other students reaching, thrusting, rising, not crimping, at least visibly. God, they really had the hang of it. I sank back into child's pose for a rest and caught a whiff of onions from my hands. I had stuffed a chicken and put it in the oven for Bruce and our one-year-old Lucy before I raced off to yoga. The chicken was my passport out of the house. I left them food as though it were a piece of meat. Sine doce, a part representing the whole, a sail representing a fleet, a crown representing a king, a chicken representing a mother. There was really no need Bruce was a fine cook of the manly spaghetti with sauce from a jar school, yet I cooked. A chicken roasting in the oven was virtue discernible. There it was, love, concern, nurturing, all rolled in a four pound organic fryer. Camel, all right, time to try again. I lowered gently backward into the pose at the same time reaching, reaching upward with my chest. Release into the pose, said my teacher Fran. Breathe into the tightness. Let the mind empty of the day's concerns. I wondered if Bruce had found the good bread I had left on the counter. Guilt bread. They could chew on it while I hung out in this room pretending to be in India. I should have bought them roti. Suddenly, I got a fluttery, scary feeling across my breastbone. It felt like something might tear. I carefully lifted out of the pose and spoke up. Uh, Fran, when I'm doing the pose, I have this feeling in my chest. Kind of a scary, tight feeling. Fran was adjusting someone across the room. She had a way of looking like a thoughtful seamstress when she made adjustments. 
an inch let out here, a seam straightened there, and everything would be just right. She might as well have had pins tucked between her lips and a tape measure around her neck. Without missing a beat or looking up, she said, Oh, that's fear. Try the pose again. Fear? I hadn't even known it was there. That's the end of the prologue. In future Read With Me episodes, longer chapters will be read in three parts. Now, let's explore camel pose. <clears throat> First, let's sit up tall, engaging the core muscles by drawing the navel in a little bit, relaxing the shoulders down from the ears, and tuning into the breath. Slow inhale, allowing the abdomen to inflate, the chest to rise, and very subtly, the spine lengthens upward through the crown of the head and downward through the tailbone and the legs sinking into the ground. As we exhale, the navel draws in a little bit more strongly, and we still relax the shoulders down and allow everything to ground toward the earth. Let's join me for three breaths, mindful breaths. Slow inhale, slow exhale. Third time's the charm. Relax your breathing, and when you're ready, swing the legs to the side and come to hands and knees. Use a cushion or a rolled up towel if you need extra padding underneath your knees. Knees come straight down from the hip joints, spread the fingers wide, and bring them right under the shoulders. As we warm up the spine, <clears throat> front and back, and open up the throat before attempting camel pose. Feet can be uh, flexed or tucked under, or the tops of the feet and the toenails can be resting on the earth. A few cat cows to warm up. Draw in the navel, flatten the back, relax the tailbone a tiny bit, relax the shoulders down from the earlobes. Draw the back of the ears straight up toward heaven as we try to get the neck aligned with the rest of the spine. You can look at the space <clears throat> just in front of your fingers, the front of your mat. Three rounds of breath three cow poses flowing into cat pose. Inhale, let the chest come forward, the tailbone lift up, and your gaze comes forward. As you exhale, draw in the navel, tuck the tailbone, tuck the chin, press into the hands <clears throat> and lower torso as the front, as the back of the heart arches towards the heavens. Nice and slow, blow into your inhale, cow pose. Exhale into your cat tuck, like a Halloween cat. Three times, follow your breath. Inhaling, we're opening. We're drawing the heart forward and opening up the throat slightly, lifting the tailbone. Abdomen relaxes toward the earth. Exhale, everything tucks. 
and the back of the heart reaches toward the heavens. Last round. Slow inhale. Slow exhale. And we come back to tabletop. Take a couple of resting breaths. And then join me to standing upright on your knees. Roll the shoulders back a couple of times. And then forward a couple of times. Reach the arms out as you inhale and up. Draw the navel in, turn the palms out. A slow exhale as we reach out and then down. Two more times, follow your own breath. Third time's a charm. Inhaling, reaching out and up. You can gaze up at your thumbs if you wish, or you can keep glancing forward. Palms out, navel in, exhale out, and then down. <sighs> Healing sounds are always welcome. They create vibration throughout the body, breaking up mucus and increasing circulation to the internal organs. There's a couple of different ways to get into camel pose. We can bring our hands to the sacrum, anchor the feet, gaze forward, inhale, reach the heart up and gaze up a little bit, drawing your navel and as you exhale, draw the pelvis forward while the shoulders relax back. You don't have to go back very far. This is modification one. Tuck your chin and inhale and exhale yourself out of the pose. Version two. Um, reach your fingertips to the back of your leg. Inhale the opposite hand forward and up. Watch it rise. Draw in your navel, and as you exhale, rela relax the shoulders back while the pelvis reaches forward. If there's any stiffness in the neck, keep the gaze forward instead of up. When you're ready to come up, let your chin come toward your chest. Inhale your shoulders back up, and then exhale your hand down. Whatever we do on one side, we have to do on the other side. Inhaling. Exhaling. Navel in, pelvis forward, shoulders relaxed back. You can look up or straight ahead. It all depends on how your neck feels today. When you're ready, chin comes to chest, inhale yourself upright, Navel in as you exhale the arm down. Take a resting breath. We can go for the classic pose. Open up the shoulders a little bit. Inhale up to open up the throat. Exhale the chin down. When you're ready, inhale into camel, inhale and exhale into camel pose.
stay here for a breath. When you're ready, slowly bring the chin to the chest, hands to the sacrum. Inhale your shoulders back over your hip joints. Exhale. Come back to your tabletop pose. One or two cat cows to massage the spine. Back bends always open the heart. We always need to counter pose. Finally, back to a flat back. Toenails onto the mat. Inhale, lengthen the spine. Exhale the navel in. Slide the hips back toward the heels. Inhale again. And as you exhale, bring the forearms down. You can stack your fists and let your first eye touch down. or flat hands. Find, find where you are open. Use props as you need to. And lastly, you can go for the classic pose. Anything to keep the hips from coming up too high in the air. And again, if you feel like your hips are up too high, bring in a prop or use your hand, your fists or your hands. Don't forget those healing sounds. Ready? Tuck your chin and lift up out of it. Come back 